Greetings, this is August 12th, early afternoon. We are looking at a Sentinel-3 image of the Tremont Creek fire and the expansion that's kind of moved south of Savannah Mountain and to the east of Tungqua Lake. The Sentinel-2 images provide higher quality. This is a bit grainy and hard to see, but the Sentinel-3 comes more often, so it can provide us some detailed information. We'll take a look at that. As the satellites orbit, there can be time gaps when we receive information. Uh, the VIIRS will pass in the afternoon, and then we're waiting until uh, the orbit at 12.30 a.m. for the MODIS update. So at the end of this video, we'll take a closer look at the Sentinel-3 system and how we can tweak the data to see a little bit clearer. First, we're going to Windy. We're taking a look at that northwest airflow that's come down the center of the province. Uh, it's kind of gone in ripples over the terrain. We are looking at nine kilometers an hour from the northwest at the White Rock Lake fire zone. Gusts will peak between 2 and 5 p.m. today. I was hoping for a wind shift to come from the east on Friday tomorrow. However, it looks like just a lot of variation in wind direction, though the winds do look to be a bit more subdued. However, on Saturday and Sunday, we are looking at significant gusts coming from the southwest. These weather forecasts are constantly changing, so I do highly recommend you go to the Windy site. The link is in the description below and check in on your specific area. Just zoom in. Uh, click a flag anywhere on the screen and then click on the down arrow and the forecast pops up at the bottom. There's also a compare button at the bottom of the screen. If you click on that you can see a variety of weather models stacked up on top of each other and make a comparison. Another good source of information is Drive BC. This enables us to see what's happening on the ground and these cameras are updated fairly frequently. Here we're looking at Highway 97 near Falkland, uh, viewing southeast. We can see some of that haze in the distance, uh, smoke coming up, and then over at Highway 97C, uh, this is south of West Bank, looking south, we see a lot of haze coming through from the White Rock Lake fire. However, if we jump over to Kalamalka, it looks like quite a blue sky day looking north. So it really depends on where that smoke trail is going. Here we are looking at Monte Creek, the brake check at Highway 97, looking south and not seeing a lot of smoke coming over the Monte Creek area, but this will be a good cam to check if those southwest winds return on Saturday and Sunday. We're going now to NASA's FIRM system. This is a fire information for resource management system. This is the White Rock Lake fire zone. We can see Okanagan Lake, North Okanagan Lake, in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. Monty Lake is just left of center at the upper portion of the screen. Uh, we're looking at yesterday's infrared data. It's yellow because it's 24 hours old and we're now rolling into today's infrared. It looks like those perimeters are still quite active. They're pushing out from the interior of the fire, seeking new fuel and expanding slightly on the north, south and eastern sides of these fire flanks. Let's zoom in and look at that uh, southeastern flank adjacent to Okanagan Lake. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. Keep in mind these infrared heat detections can be off position. They can also be obscured by smoke and clouds. So we may not be seeing exactly where uh, fire is. And this doesn't mean that the entire square is being consumed by fire. It means that somewhere within these squares heat was detected. We're zooming in closer to the Kalini Beach area. This is infrared from yesterday and now today. I am seeing infrared close to some of the roadways. Those are the 24 hour old yellow squares, but I am seeing some red a little bit further north along the lake shore closer to west side. Here zooming in right in on Kalini Beach. Uh, this is yesterday's infrared and now today's. It does appear like everything's pushed east a bit and I am seeing some roadways 
underneath the yellow squares and at the edge of those VIIRS red squares. Those yellow squares are 750 meters across and again they may be off position. The red squares are 375 meters across. We've moved slightly north. This is looking at the west side area. This is infrared from yesterday, 24 hours old, and now we're rolling into today. We see those red, younger uh, VIIRS squares uh, moving towards the lake, and it looks like they're right up against Northwest Side Road on the Boulot Provincial Park area. Moving northwestwards up to Monte Lake, we're looking at the Paxton Valley and uh, the Highway 97 moving eastwards towards Falkland on the right-hand side of the screen. These are older infrared and now today. There is increased activity on the north side of the Paxton Valley. There has been a push eastwards by a lot of these younger VIIRS infrared. The new infrared to the west of Monte Lake appears to be within that 24-hour perimeter established yesterday. Now we're moving eastwards. This is the Tremont Creek Fire. We're looking at a large uh, cluster of infrared, 24 hours old, just south of Savannah Lake on Savannah Mountain, and now today. We can see that newer infrared. It's moved south and east of Tunqua Lake. This was showing up on the MODIS system last night about 12.30 a.m. And uh, now we have that younger VIIRS infrared confirming the data that we saw last night. Tunkwa Lake is about center of the screen. And if we look just to the right of that, we can see the younger infrared has moved further south. We'll do a quick scan of some of the other fire zones around the province. This is both Lytton at the top of the screen and Coquihalla down at the lower portion of the screen. Infrared from yesterday and now today. We can see new movement southwards. Uh, some of those clusters are heating up uh, around the Coquihalla. There's more activity and on that southeastern flank of the Lytton fire, more activity there. We're now moving to the Sparks Lake Fire Complex. Uh, we can see activity to the east of Young Lake, that's close to the top of the screen, and on the western side of Bonaparte Park. Zooming in, this is the infrared from yesterday and now today. There's a slight buildup of intensity, but I'm not seeing very much movement uh, eastwards. I am seeing a bit of movement southwestwards and uh, it appears to be within existing perimeters. But again, do go to the NASA firm system if you require more detailed and up-to-date information on your specific region. We've jumped northwestwards to the Flat Lake Fire Zone. Highway 97 is running vertically on the right-hand portion of the screen. We can see intensity from yesterday on the western flank, the northern flank of this fire zone. And here we are looking at today. I'm not seeing a lot of expansion, uh, more intensity, but within the existing perimeters. Jumping north, uh, this is the areas around Canham Lake, to Wheel, and to the north we have Horsefly. This is infrared from yesterday, and now today, pretty much in the same areas that it was in yesterday, uh, not seeing any dramatic outbreaks. We've moved further west, that's the Fraser River running vertically down the center of the screen. Uh, we can see the fire up at uh, Gang Ranch at the top of the screen. Uh, Flat Lake is to the right of the screen. And the fire north of Pavilion, north of Lillooet, is at the bottom of the screen. This is yesterday's infrared and now today. So it does appear that these fire zones are aging in place, not noticing any dramatic expansion in one direction or another, uh, despite those strong wind gusts coming in the afternoon. We're jumping now to the southern interior. We can see Manning Park over on the left-hand side of the screen and the fire that's east of Oliver and Osuyas on the right-hand portion of the screen. This is the infrared from yesterday and now today. Both of these fire zones appear to be aging in place. I'm not seeing any expansion to the south. And if we roll over to Lower Arrow Lake, uh, the Nelson area is in the center of the screen. This is infrared from yesterday 
the yellow squares and now the red squares. Not seeing much change at all. We're completing this uh, sort of counterclockwise circle around the southern interior of British Columbia. We're looking at the Shuswap now. We can see Adams Lake at the top of the screen. Uh, Shuswap Lakes just to the left of center. Sycamus is just to the left of center. And uh, Maple Lake and Sugar Lake are at the bottom of the screen. This is infrared from yesterday and now today. Definitely more intensity on all of these fire zones. There was a subtle push uh, southeastwards and eastwards on all of these fire zones. And we notice up at the top of the left-hand portion of the screen around the Momich area to the east of Adams Lake, that has grown in intensity. This is a scan of the southern portion of the province uh, looking over a generic background so we can see a change from yesterday and now today. So at this altitude, we're not seeing a lot of change, but there is increased intensity and a lot of new hot spots within the existing fire zones. Also on the White Rock Lake area towards the North Okanagan, there's been subtle expansion eastward. So something to watch for if you're southeast, east or northeast of these fire zones, especially with the potential of southwest winds coming in uh, over the weekend. Go to the links in the description below and check for those ground and situation reports. Uh, stay up to date. There are a lot of fire zones and they each deserve attention and uh, we can't really cover them all in too much detail on this sort of video format, but uh, you can go there and check it out and make sure that you are aware. Let's now go back to the Sentinel system on the EO browser. The link will be in the description below. This is Sentinel-2 imagery from August 8th of the fire to the east of Oliver and Osuyas, and we can see the burn area about center of the screen. Very detailed imagery. However, when we get the scan, sometimes cloud cover obscures what we're trying to see. The Sentinel-1 system offers some fairly detailed topography, uh, but it doesn't really show us where burn areas are. So there is the Sentinel-3 system. It uh, gives a bit of a grainy photograph, and uh, if you need a, kind of a brief tutorial, I believe it's on July 31st. I'll put the link in the description where I just kind of go over how to load up the different screens on the EO browser. But if you've loaded up the Sentinel-3 data in the Discover tab, and then you go over to the Visualize tab, scroll down until you see Customize. You'll be presented with RGB bands, and if you click and drag those colored circle bands over the RGB uh, models at the bottom, you can adjust the coloration and get a fairly definitive view of the burn areas. So through a process of elimination, I loaded B17, B21, and B6 for the RGB components, and I was able to see a pretty clear view of the burn areas. And this is imagery from yesterday, and we didn't have Sentinel-2 imagery available, so this Sentinel-3 system can be used to get an indication up to date of where the fire zones have affected. This is Sentinel-3 imagery from yesterday. Tunkwa Lake is just below center of the screen, so the Sentinel-2 imagery wasn't available for this area, but now we can see what is happening. And I'll check again for an updated Sentinel-3 image of that movement that's happened to the east of Tunkwa Lake. Of course, there are some of us that do not require the satellite imagery because we have a very sensitive nose. And if you can use whatever resources you can get your hands on, that's great. Eyes, ears, nose, and the updated ground reports in the description below. I apologize, there's a lot of trucks moving around here today. Please be safe and stay up to date on the situation in your area. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.